So this map here is the most up-to-date map of the terrestrial human footprint um, on Earth. It was published last week in Nature Communications. Now this research has been um, described by many as a glimmer of hope because it's, it's shown that the Earth's or the terrestrial human footprint has declined over the last 20 years, while the world's economies and the populations have increased. Since the Earth summit, the world's economy has grown by a staggering 153%. The world's population by 22%, but the human footprint itself is grown by only 9%. Now, as I say, the reports on this paper have been quite interesting in that people say, look, there's hope. There's hope here. We're actually slowing our footprint down and growing our economy. I tend to think that's rather naive. Now, this is a less pretty map, especially if you're a non human species on Earth. This map shows the human footprint, the same exact data, but shows where we have dramatically destroyed the environment to such an extent that there is no natural habitat left on Earth. So this is a map which shows where the dominant vegetation is now dominated by other activities, such as agriculture, urbanisation, industrial logging. My, this map shows where the Earth has been trashed terrestrially. 50% of the Earth has been so modified that it does not sustain natural levels of biodiversity. If you look at the marine maps, which has been conducted by Ben Helpen, it shows an even more dramatic story. So what is abundantly clear is that while we've slowed down over our human footprint over time, and we've talked up the virtues of things like sustainable development, nature, biodiversity, those things that sustain life on Earth is declining. Now the IUCN, um, have done a remarkable job of re comprehensively recording what is actually happening on Earth right now. And these are the six most comprehensively assessed taxonomic groups conducted by the IUCN Red List. They made for, made for incredibly sad reading in my mind. One quarter of all mammals are in a state of serious decline, facing extinction. Four in ten amphibians, one in ten birds, and a staggering 63% of cycads will disappear off the face of the planet if we don't take urgent action now. Perhaps even more scary though, and something that is not talked about by much of the conservation community, is what's happening to the world's large intact systems. Now intact ecosystems are the strongholds for biodiversity. They contain more carbon than any other ecosystem because they're not degraded and they have incredible carbon sequestration potential. In the last few years, there's been some very interesting science showing that if your system is intact and functioning, not only does it regulate planetary and regional climates, it actually affects local weather regimes. So while these systems are intact, there's less chance for things like drought. They provide ecosystem services from food, from water, medicine and fibre for hundreds of millions of the most marginalised communities on Earth. So these things are important. Now a paper which is coming out next week, unfortunately it didn't come out in time for this Congress, shows that we've lost three million square kilometres of wilderness, of intact systems, since the Rio Convention. Now, what is three million square kilometres? That's a, that's a number that is large but incomprehensible. That's an area twice the size of Alaska. That's an area half the size of Australia, lost in just 20 years. We now only have 23% of the, in, the terrestrial planet that can be considered wilderness or intact. Some areas have been decimated. The Amazon, in 20 years, we have lost a fully a third of large intact ecosystems across the Amazon basin since the Rio summit. Now what's, what's again not talked about, which must be talked about, is that once you destroy the very fabric which makes an intact system, once you start degrading it and eroding it, putting roads in it, putting industry in it, and actually modifying the system, it can never actually return to what it was. It's like a species extinction. The last individual of the last population of a species, the loss of that individual is as profound as it is sad. Wilderness is the same. Once you lose, when you erode the substance of a wilderness area, an intact system, once you start changing the fabric that makes that system, the processes that drive that system, it won't return, it is lost forever. And incredibly important, and it's incredibly important for this Congress, a wilderness system, an intact system, cannot be offset. So what has this got to do with the Sustainable Development Goals? Why is the loss of species and degradation of ecosystems so important? 
I found this figure on the net the other day. This is the five P's to drive the sustainable development goals. Have people seen this before? I think it's a very elegant um, figure and it talks about people, prosperity, partnership, uh, peace and planet. And they all link together in driving all the sustainable development goals. Now I argue they're all very fine goals, like driving forces. And there's a good reason. Now, Jeff summed it up beautifully. This is what we need to achieve. But in my mind, the figure, though elegant, is slightly wrong. Now I made this figure. It's not elegant at all. <laughs> but planet is the bedrock of sustainable development goals. If you lose the planet, you lose the lot. And if you don't get the issues facing the planet, then the other peace cannot be achieved. Peace cannot be achieved. Partnership cannot be achieved. It's impossible. It is that simple and it's that fundamental. And the core to ensuring that the planet works is to ensure that nature conservation is foremost in every sustainable development goal. Because these activities sustain all life on Earth. Now, we've heard this quite a lot, and Jeff mentioned, about it, mentioned it to us before. We are running out of space and we are running out of time. Every year we put nature second to other societal goals. However important and however beneficial, we lose opportunities that we will never get back. We heard yesterday that later is officially over. Later will be too late. Tom Freedom, Thomas Freedom is right. And that means we fundamentally, while we go forward in the sustainable development goals, need to change the narrative that currently makes nature conservation just one activity that competes with other socially acceptable activities. We need to move to a narrative that where nature conservation is at the forefront of every single sustainable development goal and recognise that if we fail nature, if we fail the planet, there is no chance, no chance of achieving any of the other goals, however hard we try. And that's tough. And Jeff has said, you know, what are, what are the plannings? What are the metrics? What can we do? I can't give you them all. I don't know them all. But I'll give you two that is to think about and perhaps respond to. If we want to look after nature and we want to look after the planet, we must start asking the fundamental question, what does nature need? And I think if we start honestly re reflecting on that question, we will know that the current goals set in, in conventions like the Biological Diversity Convention are inadequate. They are simply too small. They are insufficient for what nature needs. 17% of land protection, 10% of marine protected areas, stopping half of deforestation by 2030. That's not what nature needs. And yet we're celebrating it sometimes and going, look, that was a great outcome. And maybe next time we'll get 25% and 15% and get a third. And that'll be great. That's a joke. We're running out of time. So we need to be honest. The I said must be honest and say, right, let's start from the, the position of what nature needs. What is a sufficient target to stopping extinction and maintaining ecological processes that will sustain not only nature, but all the ecosystem services that help human, humans, especially those poorer communities who rely on ecosystem services directly from nature. So that's one thing I'll, I think we've got to challenge ourselves on. What is a sufficient goal for nature? And the other one is simply this. The last remaining globally important intact systems are declining. They're dwindling in front of our eyes. Beyond their values of strongholds for biodiversity, carbon, other ecosystem services, and the fact that they house millions and millions of people, these systems, the systems on the right of this photograph, shows that they are the natural observatories where we can study ecological impacts of global change and therefore play the point of this is the reference point. This is what we must be trying to achieve when we restore things, when we rewild things. That is the point we've got to return to. And I hate the term natural capital. I think it speaks to greed, to be honest. But if you really want to use the word natural capital as your catch cry, it's the systems on the right, which are the fortresses of natural capital. The systems on your left don't give you any. Now this photo is the, a photo of the Great Western Woodlands in Western Australia. It's the largest temperate woodland um, on the planet. What I love about this photo, that's the rabbit proof fence, by the way. You can see that fence. The cloud line follows the vegetation. And I think that's really very interesting. And if you're a farmer, you, you, work, you work that out very, very quickly. Currently, no global initiative, as far as I'm aware, from the CBD to the UNFCCC, seriously talks about the quality of intact systems and actually mentions it specifically in text as a target. And this is staggering. We need to put things in now to save the last intact ecosystems in both marine and in terrestrial um, realms, as these places are disappearing. And these places must become no-go. They must be areas that once you 
put humanity in place. In, inside it, it'll be degraded. We must recognise that and therefore stop those activities from occurring, from damaging the fabric of these ecosystems. So I think the Sustainable Development Goals give us a very good chance of actually re reorientating ourselves. But we have to also be very honest. If we continue on the current status quo by setting small targets and ignoring things like ecosystems, we're going to run out of time and run out of options. And this will be a disaster for nature, for the climate and for humanity. And we do have a duty to act for all those non-human species out there and for our children and their children. Thank you.